See these guys? They're playing Overwatch. In 2023 alone, the prize pool for an Overwatch tournament was a million dollars. And the average contract was ranging from $50,000 to $300,000. Just for playing your favorite game. And you might be wondering, is it just games or is it something deeper? We at Shenandoah University do not play games recreationally, but rather we study the actual games and we study the business industry that's behind it that has made $4 billion at the end of 2023. So anybody that's been around the industry for a bit, oh, we, all, we all have like just a collection of these, yep. <laughs> these from events that we've been to. Nice. <laughs> but we do it because the feeling that we get, the gratification, the passion from, you know, you seeing this in crazy play up on the main stage and the roar of the crowd and like, I can just, I'm like giving myself yeah. goosebumps, yeah, man. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> How did you get into esports? From what age? What was your first video game and how did it carry on with your life? So it's interesting because I come from a different era than you. Uh, so it starts with my very first Nintendo Game Boy uh, back when I was five. I got it for my fifth birthday. And <laughs> yes. What year was that? <laughs> that was 1994. 1994. Yes. I wasn't even alive at that time. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, got my first Game Boy. Uh, my, you know, my love for gaming kind of blossomed from there. And how's life? Great. Life is great. The Overwatch team is rolling so far, so I'm yeah, very excited. So we started a clan with our family, and so we would play almost every day together as a family. So that really started getting me kind of competitive and into improving at a game because you know you, you want to be the best in your family so we all had a little bit of a rivalry going. <laughs> so I have kind of an odd path into esports so when I first started at Shenandoah I wanted to be a um, I wanted to go to physical therapy school and then you know my first semester here was also almost like I think I believe it's the second semester of the esports program so it was you know the whole time I was here I've always been a huge gamer you know I got to see the growth of this program got to see it keep continue growing so after two years in um my exercise science program i realized that i liked it you know i enjoyed the classes but i didn't love it so then i decided you know it's time for me to switch into esports because that's something i love so and that, you know if you don't love what you're going to do you're not going to be great at it so i figured it's time to switch so i switched into that so now i feel like my love of both has really combined and helped me try to be the best at both and teach others. Um, honestly, my first game, first competitive game I ever really played was Overwatch. I got it when I first came out on beta when I was a freshman in high school. Um, and I've been playing it ever since. I've been absolutely in love with it. Um, during that first time while I was in high school, I jumped around a little bit with some different teams that I just met through friends or just organized with friends, played in some little tournaments, but never really went anywhere. So Overwatch has really sparked this mm -hmm. interest in your esports. So what do you find so appealing in Overwatch that you want to spend thousands of hours playing that mm -hmm. game? Uh, for me, it's the teamwork. It's being part of a team and working together to achieve the goal. Like, it feels incredible. Even with completely random people, uh, when you're all on the mics, all calming together, and you know, you can be performing at your best, but even at your best, if your team isn't playing with you, there's nothing you can do. So it's on you to make sure that you're encouraging everyone on your team to play well and really bringing it all together. And that's why I fell in love with it. Well, I come from a soccer background, so I really like games that kind of go on for a long period of time with no interrupted flow breaks. So the kind of the game gets you push in and push out at the same time. Sort of different to CSGO where there's a lot of stopping. It's more like football in that sense. Um, so I'm a big fan of the flow and especially teamwork where everyone has a role and you have to work together um, all the time and if one person doesn't do their job, everything kind of falls apart. So I'm a big fan of all of those aspects in the same game. I could be biased, but Rocket League is definitely my favorite eSport. You know, I think it's the best eSport because it is the most simple. Everyone understands the concept of, you know, get the ball in the net. 
and you just use cars to do it. So that's why it's one of my favorites, but it also has an unlimited skill ceiling. So every year, like I would say any pro team this year could pretty much destroy any pro team last year. Like they did a progress in like the skill at which the game evolves is just so fast. So I think it's really truly hardly like impossible to master the game. Yeah. If you think of the player being at the top of the tree or the pyramid or whatever you want to put it, um, you think about the support network. Just like if we just take a look at first, let's start at the team, right? You've got the, the, the team manager, you've got the coach. That's just two other positions outside of just the player, right? And then um, from the team level, you go maybe into the league, right? And now you have like the league manager, you've got the event operations, you've got uh, the broadcast production, you've got, and we talked about a lot about the broadcast production and, and everything that kind of goes into that. Um, there's this entire support network that you may see this one person up on stage competing, but then from there, you've got all this great network of, of everything that made that one competition happen at the very top, right? Um, and it, it can be anywhere from event operations to, to broadcast production to tournament operations to uh, vendors and sales and merchandise. If you look at, you know, an MLG, HCS, um, CDL, any of these major operations, even Blast uh, that you mentioned earlier, um, just the next time you go to one of those events, just stop in the middle of the floor and just look at every single thing that's going on around you and know that there was a sound engineer, there's, you know, video cameras and camera operators, there's lighting technicians, just in the physical space, right? But then you go into all the different moving pieces of uh, the rest of the event, and all of a sudden there's this thriving ecosystem that that one player is, yes, the point of focus for the, for the majority of the event, but it's all these other things that really make esports what it kind of, that, that feeling that we get. And that's what we try and prepare people for in the industry is the fact that there's this entire ecosystem around the, just the competition um, and there's plenty of work to be done. So right now we're in the broadcast room of Shenandoah University and here the students actually apply their technical skills in softwares and in the actual game in order to create live streams where, which you can watch. So here we have vMix, which is basically what breaks down all the inputs that we're getting and enables us to send what the spectator is seeing to the stream and also to our replay tech who's sitting on my right. So the person on the right is able to get in-game replays as they're happening. That way when there's any breaks in the action, we can kind of recap what just went on and show them from a different perspective or slow it down so our casters can re-explain what they just saw to kind of help with, for the average viewer to uh, follow each game when they're most pretty fast paced. The next thing to show is probably in here, which is where our casters actually sit that we were talking about. So right here we have our green screen and where the casters sit. We have both of their headphones and all the lighting equipment to make sure it looks good. This is the camera that records the casters. And over here we have a TV that shows the gameplay so they can use that to cast off of. And we have another TV up in the corner so we can show the casters kind of what the stream uh, director is seeing so they also have a view into what will happen next so on this it will be kind of broken down into the vmix so they can see what the stream is seeing right now and what the stream will see next so they can transition it smoothly for the viewers um, in the headset they will be able to hear the director talking to them when they press a button so they can also tell them to shout out certain sponsors, adjust to something that's coming their way, or stall for a minute if some technical issues happen. So that is where the communication kind of comes through. How many people work uh, on average during a use gas in these rooms? Generally, they will, there will be two different spectators, so we can swap between their two points of view. There will be a director, there's going to be a replay tech, 
and then there's going to be two casters, so around six people each time. Like I was talking about earlier with the director, um, they would sit right here controlling vMix and with the microphone, and this is the soundboard, and that kind of controls how all the sound flows in and out between if we're going to hear the replay, if we're going to hear the game, if the director wants the casters to be able to hear him, it's all controlled through this soundboard. Uh, and then we have another soundboard over here. Um, this one controls the actual sound for the general arena. So this isn't stream related, this is just sound to the actual arena for when we want to have live events or for our spectators that are here during our online events who enjoy the online events from the arena. I mean, that's already oh. in the Outlander's going for the boot, might not find anything, but the blizzard's on down at all. This is not good for Shenandoah, and they caught them straight off the back line. They're so focused on getting the boot of their own. They're going to lose on an Enders, but Ben's blizzard, can that be enough to turn the fight? The fight is still even. Dragon with X spinning straight <laughs> towards the back. Oh, you love it to see it, Shenandoah. Oh, the slave comes through. Aramori is down. Valiant Guardians, they're losing player after player as Washington Timeless. They're just keeping the part moving closer and closer to that line. It's Rod Dirty Bird, and they're going to get it. The reverse sweeping the undefeated. Talk about an element of surprise. Nobody checked the radar today because there's a blizzard up there, Rips Guardians. NYXL Academy completely caught them by surprise. Not in the high ground locked down, but fun is going to go ahead single-handedly. So, more about your profession. Uh, what was your first cast like? What did you do? Oh boy, uh, my first cast was from my PlayStation, I did not have a PC at the time. It was with my $20 headset, no camera, I was producing the stream, I was observing the stream, and I was talking over it by myself. That was my very first experience casting, which, <laughs> as that sounds absolutely ridiculous, I was, I was about to turn 16, so... Um, at that time, I didn't really know much about the esports industry. It was literally from one of the leagues I was competing in. They're like, we need a caster. Does anybody want to do this for fun? I'm like, great, that sounds cool. Um, and from there, it was it was just kind of a growing experience. And your main goal is to become that tier one caster. Yeah. So this is like your, what you're living for. Mm -hmm. And you and you're getting all this experience. So how does it feel to truly uh, to finally get the experience that you need in real life because from my from my experience and from just any gamer we do a lot of youtubing we study from the screen but when you start to interact with an actual professor in that field do you feel that it brings like more more of what I think that having this more in-person aspect makes it all seem more real. Um, for the first year and a half that I did commentary, it was from my room in my house during the COVID pandemic where I didn't see anybody. Uh, whereas coming here, I'm like, okay, like this is a real thing. There's a bunch of other people that are coming here to study um, under the exact same reasons. And I think that effect of it has just brought so much more to light, um, and even doing some other LAN events in the collegiate scene um, have been just great experiences overall to under understand the overall passion that people have, get that level of interaction, build up a network, and understand where everybody comes from. What about the, the EXP? What is that? Yeah, so EXP uh, stands for Exper Experiential Learning for Professionals. Uh, it's basically our club on campus that helps uh, esports students gain professional industry experience in the esports industry. Uh, I'm actually the president of that club. I was just elected president this year. Been a part of the club since its founding in 2019. And basically what we do is get opportunities for our members to gain experience through professional organizations outside of our university. So I think our most recent big event that we went to was uh, Blast TV's event in Washington, D.C. It was part of their fall premiere. And uh, it was a fantastic event out in Washington, D.C. It was actually their first event in North America for a long time. And we actually were able to send four students out from EXP to work with a few different team members with their team, and it was a great experience. What, uh, what were you doing? at those events. For example, I was in production. What was your duty and what are the duties of other students that were with you? Yeah, so my role was in operations, so I actually got there uh, four or five days before everyone else. There's a lot of uh, logistics and planning that needs to go into running a full stage event like that. You have 
hundreds of people working just to set up the stage, you know, dozens of people just working on broadcasts. You know, it takes a lot of equipment to get in, to unload, to load back in, get everything cooked up and have everything ready to go for the day. So I was kind of the oils on the gear for, uh, for that event. So moving a lot of things around and uh, helping coordinate, uh, you know, staff and things like that. But do you think connection that, that new jobs, new professions within the industry emerge like almost uh, every month, every half year? Do you think so? Absolutely, yeah. Um, I like to say uh, esports is the Wild West. Um, literally anything can be done. If you have an idea and you can sell it, people will give you money to do it. People will be interested in what you're doing. If you show enthusiasm in what you want to do, people will get excited about what you're doing, whether they believe in it or not. So I think there's so much opportunity out there and people just are so excited about esports, it's hard to you know talk to someone and not get them excited about it. People are just so interested in what's going on and how the industry is evolving every month. You're providing that opportunity right now for the people that didn't have um, that opportunity years ago. So, like, you're just resolving a problem that would have stayed if you, if not people like you. So you're like really an avant-garde. <laughs> if, if is that an, a word in English like avant-garde? Vanguard. Vanguard. Yeah. <laughs> like you're the vanguard. You're the first man like to like step on this field and actually teach people how to do all these esports related things that's like admirable that's people like me all the way from russia how many other people are like in south korea or in china or in other countries which want to do esports but maybe because of their parents vision or because of school that um talent that passion gets like pushed down inside them and lot, not let out into the public. That's how I felt for a long time. I couldn't just speak openly about video games. So, yes, you're really a vanguard and thank you for doing what you do because for me, like, it's a life changer. You're, like, you're changing my life right now. And it really matters a lot to me personally, but also to many other students which are here right now and are... <laughs> coming to the program so segue to students okay and um, let's do it the first question will be can you share some success stories of student athletes who have excelled both at esports and academics how does your program support their achievements in both areas so students that have succeeded in both competitive and academics i mean really the some of the best players are some of my best students. And I don't know if it's because they're great students that makes them great players or if they're great players that makes them great students, but their dedication to either craft really shows throughout the way that they approach college and the reason that they're here. They, they're awake and ready and eager to learn and engage with their environment. And so like this, in the same way that traditional sports you have coaches that are uh, you know, eager to encourage their student athletes to continue going to class and doing well in school because at the end of the day, sports may or may not end up being their career. Um, it's just something that helps them stay focused and, and build valuable transferable skills throughout their time in school. Um, I see the same thing with a lot of our student e-athletes, if you want to call it that. E-athletes, cyber athletes. <laughs> cyber athletes. Um, so I, what, I, what I really love is that our competitive teams, um, our varsity players specifically, are some of the uh, best students that I've had to work with because they are focused day in and day out. And then when they have to go to practice in the night, they, they're still locked into their mission here and their mission here is to you know get good education figure out what they want to do through this process and then find a great job afterwards regarding like esports and academics how do you feel does it balance where did you find it well, for me, I was always interested in getting into the other side of gaming because as I said, I started getting competitive when I was really young. So after I joined that clan in, in World of Tanks, I ended up 
leaving my family's clan to join a very competitive one. And that kind of led me in the direction of learning more about esports and not just gaming for fun. So from there, I started joining like teams, creating teams, managing teams, and getting into the more behind the scenes aspect, learning how to run tournaments. So by the time I got to college, I was super interested in becoming more involved in the business side. And once there was an esports degree, I was right on board, transferred right away, and was very excited. So uh, I think that it's important to kind of balance the game playing. Uh, going to a college where there's teams and academics about esports, it's interesting to see how each individual kind of balances it. So I try to tie them together to make it more interesting for myself. I try to work a lot with the Overwatch scene and run tournaments focused on Overwatch so that I can make more connections in the game that I'm competing and coaching in. So for me, I just try to connect it as much as I can to keep my passion fueling my academics and career at the same time that I'm playing the game. You, you were telling like a story of how you transferred because of your passion. Mm -hmm. what, what was that final push for you when you decided that, okay, this is a thing and I'm committed to it. It's risky, but I'm doing it. Uh, I think it was the fact that right before I transferred, I was coaching an Overwatch team online and they were actually really good. Uh, ha at least half of the team got picked up after they started to disband into like the semi-professional level. So they were very good and I, it kind of made me very sure that I wanted to continue pursuing coaching. And I thought that the next step in pursuing coaching was being able to coach a team in person. So that's what really made me want to come to a school with esports. I, Initially went to a different school, um, but that school ended up not really working out. So I transferred here, but they just had an esports team. And so I was just interested in the esports team aspect. But as I got more and more involved, I realized that I might as well go all the way in and come with the academics and the team. But the main push was definitely being able to coach a team in person and have kind of full control over the team because online, you don't really have much control about what they do outside of the game. You can tell them what they should be doing or ideas, but you don't really have that much control or oversight. You can only really see what's happening in the game. Your, your hands are literally untied when you have people right next to you and you can come yep. up to them and say like, you have to get better. <laughs> You'll have to study this, 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 and we're gonna do it together. Mm -hmm. and the person doesn't really have a choice, so he either competes or he doesn't compete. And uh, you ma you manage to to have a team that are consistent and that are performing really good. Yeah. And so that's already a really great achievement and a great start for a like a, a real life coaching. Mm -hmm. So if if somebody is. For example, in the Overwatch League, they're like, hey, listen, Ethan, he's not lost, uh, they need a coach, maybe he can pick up this game, so you're there. Yeah, I'm very excited, especially with the Overwatch League uh, reforming. I think there's a lot of opportunities to get into the tier one scene right now. So I'm hoping that I can take the success here and kind of get more opportunities in the professional Overwatch scene. The great thing about esports is it's, you know, just like any other industry, if you're great at marketing, if you're great at sales, if you're great at, um, you know, video production, esports isn't going anywhere. And it, all the same skills transfer over into that industry. So like, if you decided that one day you wanted to go into, you know, film production in New York City, like myself, um, you can do that, but then also, there's also esports waiting for you if you want it, if you're passionate about it, if you love it, if it gives you that same goosebump feeling that you and I just shared a little bit ago, then maybe it's for you. If we're talking about that, those those key moments that kind of really burn in our souls, um, then maybe it's for you. Like, it's not just like any hard job. It's not going to be an easy road. It's not going to be something that you know everybody's going to want to do day after day. But if you love it, if if esports and gaming is for you, and, and you want to see an industry thrive, and you love the roar of the crowd, and you love all the different little pieces that go into what esports is, then then I think maybe you want to be a part of it, right?